News may be a brewing on the Disney front. This is perhaps another failure. This is perhaps another cash grab. It is difficult to say at this point what is going on, but uh, this is a video that I was not planning to make today. This is something that I did not have on my radar, radar almost at all until a video dropped from Star Wars Theory. The preeminent Star Wars creator on YouTube, possibly uh, the preeminent Star Wars creator online. I am not well versed in the world of Star Wars, let alone the sort of um, exoplanets of Star Wars that are creators, right? So correct me if I'm wrong, but pretty sure Star Wars Theory is basically the name in independent creators as far as Star Wars is concerned. And we had news recently that EA had canceled the Mandalorian game. And so I apologize for the format of this video. This is not a video that I was um, planning on making, so I have to have notes to help me get through it here. EA had canceled a Mandalorian video game, which seemed uh, to me shocking. And it seemed to me shocking because the Mandalorian is the only popular IP in the Star Wars game, at least as far as Disney is concerned, especially, especially right now. We are not talking about the original trilogy. We are not talking about the prequels. Both of those were Lucasfilms proper, right? So we have here Disney canceling the Mandalorian game, which they have, or EA, pardon me, canceling the Mandalorian game, which Disney has every reason to want to see the Mandalorian be successful, or at least so we would think. It is with the Mandalorian that Disney can move forward with Star Wars as opposed to having to look backwards, right? Even the uh, cartoon series that they have, those were prior to the Disney acquisition. Everything that Filoni had, had come up with with uh, George Lucas on the side. <coughs> Pardon me. So Star Wars Theory made a video very, very shortly ago and said that he has a source within EA. And his source, his friend, was explaining to him just what was going on because the news of shocking uh, the news of canceling the Mandalorian game was so shocking and he said that his friend informed him that Disney had a 22% take on everything of their licensed material so EA is going to make a Star Wars game Disney gets 22% of the profits from that Everyone else that works on that game gets a percentage of the profits as well, right? So it is not something that is easy to do to give one party 22% of the take. Bob Iger came in apparently and said they want 33% of the take, not 22. 22 is not befitting of the king. 22, this is a Star Wars property. There will be billions to be made. We want 33%, like a mob boss, right? Um, we are altering the terms of the deal. Pray that we do not alter them further. EA, somewhere along the lines, decided or realized that they could not make money with Disney taking 33% off the top. Here's where we get into a little bit. So that's everything that's, that Star Wars Theory had reported. Then Star Wars Theory gets into his speculation or conclusions on what exactly was going on. And I am going to present a summary of what he believed was happening. But I am going to, I am going to differ from those conclusions because... I'm not sure that they that I'm not sure that they quite make as much sense as he's convinced that they do for one simple reason. And what he had said, let me get back to my document here. What he had said was Star Wars theory believes that Bob Iger was acting terribly towards EA 
to make EA break up with them. So that EA is the one that breaks the contract. EA then becomes the one that has to pay the exit fees. It is not Disney having to take from the coffers to cover a broken contract that they had signed with EA. It would be Disney that has to, or it would be EA, pardon me, that has to pay the money because now we can't bring this game out and owe you 33% on the profits. We have to pay this breakup fee. Here's the thing. That doesn't make sense because once you release the game, if there's profits to be had, all you're doing is missing 11% of your profits versus that game never coming out and you have to pay the exit fee on a contract. All the work you've done is lost. All the work you've done is just sunk cost. Plus, you have an additional fee of what you are having to pay to break the contract. But Star Wars Theory continues that he believes EA is breaking the... He believes that Disney is wanting EA to break up with them so that they are basically exclusively working with Epic Games. He says that it is the un, Unreal Engine. I am not... I'm not... I'm a Luddite, okay? So I'm not up with the the terms on, on technology and things. Um, but the Unreal Engine... They want access to the Unreal Engine that is used for both video games and movies in special effects. But Disney already invested in Epic Games. If they want access to that Epic or that Unreal Engine, can't they just have it? They could just do that. They've invested a billion dollars in a game publisher. So that part doesn't make sense to me either. If Disney further is the one coming to EA and saying, we don't want the 22%, we want the 33%. If Disney is going to EA and saying this, isn't that Disney breaking the contract? If that's Disney breaking the contract, they are out the money. Now, I believe... Star Wars Theory's source is telling him the truth. I just think that the conclusions might be wrong. I think that there might be other things going on here. I think that the source that Star Wars Theory has is maybe not getting... is may, Star Wars Theory's source is perhaps one step away from the rest of the story, right? This reeks of desperation from Disney. Reeks of desperation, right? Either because they are doing this without the leverage in the contract, meaning that they're just trying to bully EA into giving them an extra 11%, and EA said, screw yourself. Now, because Disney has broken the terms of that contract, Disney has to pay the exit fees, which... I don't think they want to have to do, right? They are they are hemorrhaging cash right now. Disney can't get a single thing to go well for them. Bob Iger has failed at every turn, on every level, and not only that, he's a sleazy car salesman. He's a politician, which is possibly worse than a sleazy car salesman, who normally is able to at least look good while he's doing it. He's at least able to look like, look, maybe this didn't work out, but I'm in the right. He looks like a buffoon at every turn. He has looked like a buffoon in every fight that he's chosen to fight. Every time Bob Iger has put the gloves on, he hasn't lost a TKO. He's woken up on the mat every time now. So it's possible that he went to EA and said, hey, look, give us the cheddar or we're not signing another contract with you. And EA said, oh, shove it. You're trying to break the terms of this contract. You can pay the exit fees. Or maybe there was a sliding scale permissible in the contract. Maybe Disney had the right to go up to EA and say, look, 
we intimated that we wanted 22%, but we want the 33, fellas. And they had the right to do it. If that's written in the contract, they can do that at any time during this process, and they did it, <clears throat> okay. Then EA is the one here that is going to be paying the exit fees. But, but if they are absolutely within their rights to be doing this, no one, no one is ever going to work with them again. You can come up to us at the 11th hour and tell us you want more money and you're actually going to pull that card? We're never working with you again. You've already, you've already ruined all of your IP. You've already sunk the ship. We don't want any of the cargo. You've already sunk the ship. We can't sell anything on land, right? Or maybe, maybe EA has gotten to this point in the process, and they're not just telling Disney screw off with this move. It's possible there is that sliding scale in the contract. Bob Iger is exercising it, and EA is looking around and saying, this game isn't going to be profitable anywhere. This game isn't going to be profitable anyhow. So, if we cut bait now, this is the only amount of money we lose. But if we come forward with more marketing, and we come forward with all of the rest of the work that has to be done, this hole that we're digging just keeps getting deeper. Regardless, now, it, maybe Star Wars Theory is absolutely correct in his conclusions, right? Maybe. Maybe this was Bob Iger trying to get EA to break up with him. Does Disney win here? Look, I'm not, I'm not particularly versed in Epic Games. I am not particularly versed in this entire universe. I am not particularly versed even in Star Wars. So maybe Star Wars theory is correct. And, he, and Bob Iger forced EA to break up with him and therefore to pay the exit fees. Disney still loses. Epic Games was not going to make the Mandalorian Bounty Hunter video game the way that EA was. And I know EA has a bad reputation, but EA can make functional games. EA can create games that have um, a fan following. They can do that. They can also make a game that will turn a dollar. And here's the biggest part of it. So w when you talk about normies, right? It's a dirty word inside of fandom, but it's not a dirty word at the business level. The normies are absolutely necessary. <clears throat> the normies are what made the Marvel Cinematic Universe the most profitable cinematic universe of all time, right? Maybe. We don't know about the profits, I guess. We are, we are seeing more and more that the numbers may have been fudged, at least around the edges. But the normies are absolutely necessary in order to make the big bucks. You don't have that opportunity. Not only that, you don't have the culture there. You don't have the culture bomb of the Mandalorian dropping. Now, when when we when we start to look at this, now let me let me give me one moment here. I apologize for doing this on the fly. I was not expecting to come up with this talking point. The movies for Star Wars. The last one dropped in 2019. Five years ago. 2019 was five years ago. And that wasn't a good one. Okay? It bombed. The one before that, Garbage Fest. So you have to go all the way back. I thought The Force Awakens was a decent enough popcorn flick. 
If you're a Star Wars junkie, I understand you telling me I'm wrong and it wasn't a Star Wars movie. I thought it was at least interesting. There was some stuff there that was easy to look at. The story was all right to follow. Uh, it was th the one thing that stood out to me about the whole movie. Kylo Ren stopped the pew pew beam, right? Stopped it in its tracks. I thought that was interesting. I'd never seen that before. Um, <clears throat> that movie came out in 2015. That is a decade ago. The last decent Star Wars entry, and I think you can, even if you're a Star Wars junkie, I think you can admit that on the cultural normie level, The Force Awakens was a decent enough Star Wars movie to make a lot of money. That was a decade ago. There are kids who are sophomores in high school for whom a movie, a decent Star Wars movie, has not come out their entire life. Sophomores in high school were born. I'm doing that right, right? Or no, 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 no. You got a, you got a minus five years. Okay, so kids in middle school have never seen... Eight, is that right? Ten years? Okay, I don't have children. So you got you to gotta parse with me here. I'm doing this on the fly. Sixth graders? Are sixth graders 10 years old? Look, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. A 10-year-old has had their entire life pass without Star Wars being in the movie theaters at a profitable level. That is essentially... So, look, the, the difference between Episode 1 and the final of the original trilogy was 20 years. That's half that amount of time. And I remember when the prequels came out. I remember when the prequels came out. I had no real idea what Star Wars was. The kids on my block did, but that's the point, isn't it? There can be people in a generation for whom it is a thing, and people in the generation for whom it is not. Disney is not getting the culture bomb of a video game release, regardless if they are the good guys or the bad guys in this situation, regardless if they are the victims of EA deciding that they don't want it, or if they are the victims once again of Bob Iger being an absolute turd bucket and screwing everything up. Now, as a Disney shareholder, I invested in Disney the moment they bought Marvel because I saw what that could be. You, at the time, Toys R Us was a thing. You could walk into Toys R Us and half the store was Disney princesses, half the store was Marvel toys or, or you know, superhero type toys and Disney princess type things. Essentially, if you bought Disney, you were also buying Toys R Us, right? Since Bob Iger has become Big Bob, he has not had a single win. I Tell me, I defy you. In the past half decade, what has Bob Iger done that has turned up Disney? What has this company done that was worthwhile five years now? Five years, half a decade. As an investor, it hasn't just been a lost half decade. It has been constant steps backwards. And people ask me, why are you keeping your shares? Every shareholder gets a vote. Every shareholder gets a vote. I am going to have my vote. That is all I have for this video. If you like or appreciate what I do here, hitting the like button really does help me out as it tells YouTube to share this video with other Disney detractors. 
And if you find yourself here by chance but not designed, consider hitting the subscribe button in order to stick around for more content in the future. And more me talking crap on Bob Iger.